Breaking tonight, the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo telling me exclusively that Nicolas Maduro must go and confirming to me that there are Hezbollah cells active inside Venezuela. Watch. Do you have concerns that Venezuela runs the risk of turning into a no man's land uh, where y y you, you have these bad actors, including um, some with links to Hezbollah, that could be more of a threat because they're in our hemisphere? Yeah, Trish, I'm glad you brought that up. People don't recognize that Hezbollah has active cells. The Iranians are impacting the people of Venezuela and throughout South America. Uh, we have an obligation to take down that risk for America. The secretary is right. And just hang with me here because I'm about to tell you a lot. I actually know a lot about terror activity in Latin America. I have followed this story for 13 years and then some and was the first to report on Hezbollah and Hamas's terrorist financing operations in Latin America earlier in the decade. I spent a year working my sources, conducting research, examining bank records, and investigating the connection between terror cells in what is known as the tri-border region of South America and Hezbollah. We're going to get into Venezuela in just a second, but first, I want you to understand the history. I want you to understand the history of terror in that region. Terrorism against Americans, terrorism against Jews, and all the, of those that stand for freedom. These images, look at that. These were the terrorist attacks on the Israeli embassy in the Jewish community center in Argentina in the early 1990s, 1992 and 1994. 114 people died. And these attacks, they were all staged right here in our Western Hemisphere. They were planned, they were coordinated, and they were launched by Islamic terror groups from a tiny, lawless jungle town in Paraguay known as Ciudad del Este. Take a look right here on the map. You see that red line? That is the place where Argentina, Paraguay, and Brazil all meet. It's called the Tri-Border. It's a tiny jungle town in Paraguay, as I said, called Ciudad del Este, and it is a lawless no man's land where anything, everything, and anyone is for sale. From drugs, to weapons, to human trafficking, it is all there. This is one of the worst possible places on earth. Hezbollah finances some of its operations from Ciudad del Este. But increasingly, as Venezuela has descended into an increasingly criminal, lawless state, the terrorist financiers are setting up shop there. You know, after my initial report on the region 13 years ago, the U.S. Treasury Department cited all of the people I profiled as known terrorist financiers, and they sanctioned all of them. And at that time, I had heard reports that a lot of these Hezbollah financiers were migrating to Venezuela. That was 13 years ago. So when Secretary Pompeo says there is a very real threat of terrorism in Venezuela, this is something we should pay attention to, especially given that country's close proximity to us. Watch. Do you have concerns that Venezuela runs the risk of turning into a no man's land uh, where y y you, you have these bad actors, including um, some with links to Hezbollah, that could be more of a threat because they're in our hemisphere? Yeah, Trish, I'm glad you brought that up. People don't recognize that Hezbollah has active cells. The Iranians are impacting the people of Venezuela and throughout South America. Uh, we have an obligation to take down that risk for America. So no matter how much the mainstream media wants to pretend that this is all some kind of charade orchestrated by the U.S., no matter how much Mr. Maduro wants to tell you that, uh, I can tell you that lawless places create environments where very bad people can operate. Terrorists can operate and finance their illegal activities quite freely when you have a criminal regime. Ciudad del Este was and is, to a certain extent still, uh, under a criminal regime. 
anything goes there, and that is what Venezuela is becoming. I, I want to point something out. You know, there, there's an image that is still seared in my mind. I was reporting uh, there in that area in Paraguay, in the tri border, and I went to a neighborhood, uh, a bad neighborhood. It was just before dawn, um, and the sun was coming up. And it was probably one of the, the poorest, most notorious slums in the area. Uh, I actually had to wear a bulletproof vest because there were concerns about safety there. Anyway, what struck me the most was that there was this massive pile of garbage. I mean, bigger than this whole studio, a massive pile of garbage. And you know what? There were little kids, young, young kids sifting through that garbage, looking for a scrap of food. And alongside those children were wild pigs, wild animals, also looking for scraps of food. That was in Paraguay. It's a, an image I'll never forget. And that poverty, that poverty exists still amid a very serious criminal enterprise. Ciudad del Este, um, as I said, bad place. I spent about a year examining bank records, looked at the money moving back and forth through Hezbollah's peer-to-peer -peer money transfer system. I even saw a handwritten note, a thank you note, from Hassan Nasrullah, who's the head of Hezbollah, to one of the terrorist financiers I had investigated, thanking him for his generosity. At that time, an estimated $100 billion was being funneled from this lawless, landlocked jungle town back to Hezbollah, making this uh, criminal no man's land the biggest source of funding for Hezbollah outside of Iran. And tonight, I can report that Hezbollah is migrating. They're migrating to Venezuela where even at the time of my initial work there 13 years ago, I had heard so much about Hugo Chavez's willingness to tolerate them, willingness, because they, like him, were anti-American. Now, remember, terrorists go wherever they can hide, wherever they can strengthen. And right now, that place is Venezuela. Sources now say at least $400 million, with some estimates as high as a billion dollars, makes its way to Hezbollah from Latin America each year, which would make Latin America, right here in our Western Hemisphere, the largest source of terrorist funding for Hezbollah outside of Iran. Specifically in Venezuela, my sources report that there are connections. There are connections between some Islamic members of the Maduro regime and Iran. The biggest concern, aside from terror fundraising and the country's close proximity to the U.S., is that Hezbollah has been able to buy fake identities, passports, and birth certificates out of Venezuela, allegedly in an effort to enable their members to move more freely throughout the world. There are many reasons we need to care about Venezuela. It is horrible what socialism has done to that country for sure and should be looked at as a case study in what we should not do. The people have suffered, and that is not right. There are also strategic reasons for why we should care. Yes, oil matters. They need foreign oil companies to help give them the technology to get the stuff out of the ground. We can be of assistance there. But importantly, strategically, for security, we should care about this country because it's our next door neighbor. I mean, it's one thing to see the problems in Syria, right? It's another to see them in a place that is less than three hours from Miami, Florida. Not since 1962 have we had such a security threat to our nation. We cannot allow Hezbollah and people who want to destroy America to have a launch pad from which to do it. The U.S. is doing the right thing, and we need to keep doing it. We must use our influence to help that country and to protect ourselves. I'll tell you, we can make a dictator's life an economic hell, and we should. We are the world's largest economy. We need to make life so hard for Nicolas Maduro that he himself feels the pain, the pain that his people have endured under his so-called leadership. Change will happen, as I predicted. On December 14th, 2018, there will soon be a new Venezuela, a free Venezuela, a Venezuela free from drug lords and Hezbollah financiers, a Venezuela 
that is an ally to the United States and a voice for free markets and economic freedom in the region, it can be an enormous force for good. Libertad is on its way.